The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit who blows where it will. There is no time in my life when I do not remember reciting the Apostles' Creed by heart. It's one of those things that if you attend church, even once in a while, over and over and over again, even before you understand hardly any of the words that it says, you're able to say it along with your brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter how young or old they might be. And I remember thinking as a kid that it was strange to me. We started with God the Father, and we had a few things to say about what God the Father did in our lives and in the world. Then a whole lot to say about what Jesus was doing. And then we would just say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And then I would hear in my mind, even though we never said it out loud, I believe in the Holy Spirit and... I believe in the Holy Catholic Church and the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. I thought it was really weird that all we had to say about the Spirit was, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And that was it. It wasn't until I got a little bit older that I finally started asking, why is it that we have, like, nothing to say about the Spirit? All we say is that we believe, and then we just leave it alone. And that's when my confirmation teacher, my confirmation pastor, asked me why I thought that. And I learned that for my whole life, I'd been adding an and after the word Holy Spirit, and I didn't realize that that whole section following that all had to do with the Holy Spirit altogether. I believe in the Holy Spirit and we find the Holy Spirit in the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, in the forgiveness of sins, in the resurrection of the body, and in the life everlasting. We don't spend a lot of time talking about the Spirit generally in the Lutheran Church. We're very Jesus-centered people. And there's nothing wrong with being Savior-centered, Jesus-centered people. And I think sometimes the Holy Spirit makes us nervous. See, we heard in the book of Acts today that the Spirit comes in wind and fire and smoky mist and in speaking languages that we don't even know. It seems like it could be overwhelming and scary. And we'd much rather have Jesus, who, although unpredictable, is at least predictably unpredictable for us. And yet, every week when we profess our Christian faith in the words of the creeds, we have so much to say about what the Spirit is doing in and among us, not just 2,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago or 500 years ago, but here and now and in this place, living among us today. 
As I said with our kids this morning, a really good definition of holy, as we say that we believe in the holy Catholic church, is set apart for God. That we, as the body of Christ, who is the church, who is Catholic little c in that it's everybody who believes in Jesus all over the entire world, that we, as the people of God, are set apart for God's holy purpose, and that it is the Spirit working in and among us that allows us to do holy things in this world. We believe that God shows up every time the communion of the saints are gathered. I love it on those Sundays when we are able to actually line up in the front to take communion. Because the vision that we have is that the circle is complete. That we make up one side of the circle, those of us who are here living and breathing on earth. But that the other side of the circle is filled with the little s saints. All of those who are gone before us and are at rest. It is a foretaste of the feast to come because we see heaven. And the Holy Spirit is in and among us. You heard Jesus say today in our reading from John that one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is opens our mouths to breathe forgiveness on one another. That every time we say, forgive me, and every time we respond to that forgive me with, I forgive you, you, that those words are so holy, so important, that we know that God is showing up, that the Spirit moves in and among us as we give and receive forgiveness. We believe that the Spirit is present in the resurrection of the body. Several weeks ago when I was preaching about the Spirit, I reminded you of Ezekiel and the dry bones, right? An entire valley of dry bones where there was a horrible battle where there was nobody even left to bury the dead. So an entire valley full of nothing but dry bones, and yet with God's Spirit, with God's breath, showing up in and among those bones. They stood up. They took on flesh and blood, and they lived again. We experience this when we take the time to breathe. And we look forward to this in the resurrection of the dead. When we all will be raised together, no matter where we are or what we're doing or how long we've been in the grave. God will knit our new bodies back together and the Holy Spirit will give us breath and we will have life everlasting. The Spirit is busy. The Spirit is here in and among us even now. I urge you as we profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed today, that you think a little more about the Spirit, that you invite the Spirit to be in, with, and among you, that you might be set apart, that we might be continually brought together, that we can speak words of forgiveness and receive them, that we can be renewed, restored, resurrected, and that one day the Spirit will all gather us into life everlasting. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your power among us. Thanks be to God. Amen.